say this ad nauseum, have a million conversations before you start. Get clear on what everyone's goals are, what everyone's boundaries are, what everyone is open to, what everyone is fantasizing about, and move from there. Welcome back to Openly Podcast. I'm your host, Jessica Spandiari, and I'm coming to you from Copangan, Thailand. It's really zen here, you guys. And in a lot of ways, I'm having conversations with brand new people every day. Um, and it's really cool because at home, I kind of live in my community in Los Angeles. Everyone knows me. Um, my polyamory or non-monogamy is not new information to anyone. And so I don't offer, I don't often, I don't often encounter a ton of new people who ask me questions about my relationship, unless I ask online for people to ask me questions, which is one of the, the best ways that I have found I can really help people is just saying like, what do you actually want to know? And then sharing that on the show. So today I thought we would do something a little different that I haven't really done before. Um, I have been doing, you know, ask me anything on Instagram and now there's the new, you know, feature, it's a new app where you can make it anonymous and I get a lot of really great questions and then I respond to them on Instagram, but then they go away <laughs> and someone was like, can you please put these all in a highlight reel, which I think I will do, but I thought it could be really valuable to take some of the questions that I think could use a little teasing out that are hard to do in a you know 90 second video or however long Instagram uh, allows you to create videos for at this point. So I am going to respond to some of your questions. Here we go. Recently opened up my relationship. Thank you for your content. Wondering if there's anything you wish you'd done differently when you were first exploring non-monogamy. Sorry if you've already addressed this. Great question. There is something I wish I would have done differently. I wish that I hadn't held back and kind of had this gripping, like hold on what I wanted to preserve and what I was afraid of happening. Because in a lot of ways, I caused both my husband and I more grief than what was necessary because once we really started doing things like, you know, exploring separately, going on dates, going to parties, I was loving it all. And I'll, I'll get a bit more specific. Early on in our relationship, I had a tendency to, <laughs> Posh used to call it like the great inquisition. Um, I asked a ton of questions about, you know, what his experiences were like because I really wanted to understand and I, I almost like wanted to trigger myself, but I was also trying to put up guardrails everywhere. Like, well, let's not do this because this might happen or this person might feel this way. And by asking all these questions, I used it to inform all of the like barriers and boundaries and rules that I wanted to put up in a lot of ways because I cared very deeply about other people's experiences or how other people were going to feel, not wanting people to find out. And so I guess to clarify, I wish that I hadn't held on so tightly to my idea of controlling us stepping into non-monogamy because I made it really stressful in the beginning and we went really slow and wind up was I loved most of the things and I had this one stickler for both of us where I didn't want us to hook up with anyone that we worked with or any of our friends because I never wanted to make people uncomfortable right especially like work you know, where you're in a position of power potentially, and that can be like really blurry. And the, the kind of short of that story is our friends, sometimes even the people that we work with are some of the dopest people on the planet. And they're also really sexy sometimes. 
And so we have blurred those lines since then. And like, it's not always a good idea, but with the right people who are emotionally intelligent, who are also doing the work and who have all the information, you can have really great experiences. So the short answer is I wish that I hadn't like try to set up so many boundaries so that we couldn't do something wrong because it made for a less pleasant experience. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to do something that you don't like. You just don't do it again. It's okay to fuck up, like own up to it and say, okay, this is a learning lesson. Like the only way we're going to learn is by messing stuff up and trying stuff out. So that is the one thing that I wish I'd done differently. Okay. Next question. Um, Oh, I did a poll back in December and this was really cool. It gave me such a great perspective on how much sex other people were having and if they were satisfied with the amount of sex, if they were satisfied with the sex, if they wanted more and if they wanted more than they were having, why weren't they having it? And you guys answered with so many amazing responses and this was one of the responses to, I want more sex than I'm actually having. I want more sex in theory, but when it comes down to it, I'm always tired or not in the mood. My mind fantasizes about it when I'm not with my husband, but when we're together, my turn on is zapped. I have struggled with this. So this question, I was like, mm, save. This one hits home. This came down to the idea or sort of the like auto, just like, programming, right? This auto experience of like, we have sex at night, you know? And a lot of times when I get to the end of the day, I am not turned on. I'm tired. I want to be in bed. My body's not really as alive as it was earlier in the day. And for me, what I realized is I'm really turned on earlier in the day. I have a little bump in the morning where like I could get it in. And then in the afternoon too, my body becomes alive. I don't know if it's something to do with the circadian rhythm or like the flow of my internal clock, but that's when I want more sex. And so started attacking it at those times, like when I would fantasize about it. For example, like this person is asking here, this woman, and I would go for it then. Like I would go into his office and even if like it doesn't end up in sex, if we can have a little moment of intimacy or connection. And it's just like those bids for attention or that display of love, affection, eroticism, sensuality, right? You're like starting to create a tantric dance then. And it really showed me that it was like, oh yeah, we have dinner and then like sex. That's like what you do. It was like, you know, the natural order of things, which is just not the case. And it had me finding wanting to be playful. Okay. My mind is fantasizing about it, is what you said. So what are the fantasies? Um, in your fantasy, are you wearing lingerie? Are you in a hotel room? Like, how is your husband or other partners, for everyone listening, your partner approaching you? Is there a certain energy they're bringing? And bring that exact scene to life. It's okay to schedule your sex in. It's okay to go to your partner and say, I have this fantasy and I want to bring this exact thing to life. Now, if you took that mental picture, everything that you wanted to do and then brought it to your partner and were like, look, there are ropes involved. I am tied to this bed and I am blindfolded, but it needs to happen before 6 p.m. <laughs> then you put it on the calendar and you make your fantasy come to life. And I guarantee that if you're intentional in that way and you realize that like your sexuality deserves this level of care and attention because it leads to more connection in your relationship and clearly it's something that this person wants, um, then yeah, sometimes it's like a couple little tweaks in logistics and in timing and voila, you're creating epic scenes multiple times a week. Um, if I remember correctly, you know, most people were having sex uh, one to three times a week and wanted more on average. So I hope that helps. Happy sexing. <laughs>
<laughs> um, okay, next question. I've gotten this question a bunch, so I'm gonna address it here. I'm super flattered. Will you ever bless us with an OnlyFans? I don't know. I don't think so because that feels like a, a lot of work that I still get to do on myself around shame, around my good girl programming, around judgment, right? And my internalized misogyny that I am still unpacking every day. Um, but also it just doesn't feel like a, a thing that I want to spend a lot of time on. It feels like that is a whole other job. Does the idea of being a super sexy vixen and entertaining people turn me on? Yeah, absolutely. So that's why I said, I don't know. <laughs> that question cannot be answered at this moment. For this moment, no. Um, is your open marriage that you just are with women, this, the person who asked this question, the grammar is not there, but in your open marriage, is it just women you seek and play with or men as well? I play with men as well. Um, my husband is really only attracted to women. I'm queer, so I'm really open to all expressions of gender. Um, I've only been with men and women, but yeah, I'm open to it all and mm, love it all. Yeah, sorry, starting to fantasize. But I get this question a lot of like our dynamic and what we're open to. So open to sleeping with your sexy followers or are we just cliche fantasizing? Um, yeah, I mean, if a follower or a listener of the show became someone in my community or a friend and I wanted to hook up with them, yeah, I think so. I don't think there needs to be a big barrier at this point a lot of people listen to this show so I'm not just gonna start to rule out everyone who's a listener of open late podcast um yeah open to it hi do you think it's a good idea to involve my best friend into an intimate playful relationship with my wife we have started some first base action but the question stop is shall we continue thanks oh I Oh, this is something that would have scared the shit out of me years ago, as I mentioned earlier in the question I just addressed. You know, I used to think like, don't shit where you eat. Hooking up with friends can be so messy. But, you know, we, Lauren was a very close friend of my husband's and mine in a way, but they had a deeper relationship. And then she moved in with our very best friend and you know to have a living situation less than a mile from our home and she became such a big part of our community when she moved to LA and the chemistry was there within a month or two of her moving to Los Angeles and it was a big question like they had flirtation and Pasha and I talked about it and we were like you know, our responsibility is to the friendship. And I think we're all emotionally intelligent enough that we can preserve this friendship and make sure things don't go south. And we were confident in each other, but we were also so confident in Lauren and how she was going to show up and how we were all going to really care for each other as people so that we didn't make a mess of a beautiful friendship. So I would say if you feel confident that everyone's doing the work on themselves and they're, you know, if there's jealousy that arises, you know, you have the proper channels in place to hold space for each other. And that if the relationship is ever going to evolve away from then being romantic, you are all open to that as well and know that that's also okay. And it doesn't mean that the intimate maybe romance that starts was not successful. I'll say that. And I use Lauren as an example a lot, but I have another really good friend of mine who um, I hooked up with years ago and we didn't know each other very well when we started and it started like it was hot and heavy for a moment. And then we became really good friends. Like one of my best guy friends in the world who I love. I'm like, I love this person. And, you know, that was 
could have been messy, you know? And in a lot of ways, it caused me to grow because that was the first time I had a relationship that was like romantic that then wasn't. And it was my choice in some ways that it wasn't. Um, but then just to like also love this person and also have playful, you know, flirtatious energy like I get to with a lot of my friends, but then know that this person will always have my back is so nice. And yeah, I mean, when your friends are like hot as fuck and they're all really good people, sometimes you're going to want to hook up with them. I say go for it. I say if you're confident that it will not end badly. Now, if someone's like not doing work on themselves, it feels like there could be a competitive, you know, energy towards it. Um, you're unclear on what they want out of the situation or they want something very different than you do, then that's a red flag. And so, of course, I'll say this ad nauseum, have a million conversations before you start. Get clear on what everyone's goals are, what everyone's boundaries are, what everyone is open to, what everyone is fantasizing about, and move from there. But yeah, I wouldn't take it off the table. And that's it, that was the last question actually. Um, this has been super fun. I will likely do more of these and I think I'll do a poll on IG and find out if it's something that y'all want because yeah, I mean, when they're on social media, they're there for like 24 hours, but this will be here forever. As always, my loves, please take a moment to rate and review this show. And you can even ask me questions in the reviews of the show um, and I'll answer them on the show. The other thing that you can do that really supports us is subscribing. If you just take a moment to press that plus sign or press follow on Spotify or subscribe to our YouTube channel, what happens is, you know, numbers are numbers at the end of the day and the higher our numbers are, the more our show gets put in front of people who might enjoy or really want this content. You know, the algorithm is the algorithm at the end of the day. So do me a solid take a moment to do that and also when you subscribe and you click automatic download then you never have to wait to download an episode they'll just download automatically and they'll be there when you want to listen to them sending you so much love and i will see you all next week